In this video, I will show the process I used to build a pressure molded carbon hydrofoil mast. This method involves creating a mold out of wood and epoxy using a factory made mast as a model. Let's make the mold. To make the mold, I used wood to create a shallow box that could fit the model mast inside. After wrapping the model mast in serene wrap to prevent it from touching the epoxy, I filled the bottom cavity of the box with a relatively liquid mix of epoxy and Q-cell and gently placed my mast into it. The tape on the ends allowed the mast to fit inside without letting the epoxy drip out. Once the mast was pushed all the way down, I removed the excess overflowing epoxy and added serene wrap over the entire mold. Once again, I taped the ends to contain the epoxy and poured more epoxy Q-cell mix on top of the mast until it was completely covered. I then placed another plank of wood on top and pressed down until the epoxy started dripping out the sides. I placed cinder blocks on top to hold everything in place while the epoxy cured. That's it, now I have a mold with a perfect mass shape inside that I can use to create as many masks as I want in the future. The bottom side of my mold came out perfect, but the top part has some imperfection from air bubbles that get stuck between the serene wrap and the mast. The imperfections are less than a millimeter deep, so they're not a big deal. To mold the mast, I first applied a layer of Crisco butter all over the surfaces of the mold, including the sides. The application of the butter has two purposes. First, it works as a release agent to ensure the two sides of the mold will not get stuck together. And second, it helps the serene wrap stick better to the mold. I then added serene wrap to both sides of the mold for extra safety, making sure there's no air bubbles underneath. The next step is to place the carbon tape inside the mold, ensuring that the edge of the tape is perfectly lined up with the leading and trailing edge of the mold. It's crucial to place the carbon tape symmetrically on both sides of the mold. The longitudinal layers prevent flex, while the diagonal layers prevent twist. Layer quantity and combination can be customized. For this mast, I sandwiched the diagonal layers between the longitudinal layers. I used 14 meters of 3 inch carbon tape in total. Once the carbon tape is in place, I apply epoxy to both sides using a spatula to push the epoxy into the carbon fibers. It's essential to keep applying epoxy until the carbon is entirely saturated. The next step is to mix a small batch of two parts polyurethane foam and pour it evenly into the mold. I carefully close the mold and use clamps to keep it tightly closed. The foam expands within 30 seconds after mixing, so there is no time to waste when clamping. When the foam expands, it creates a lot of pressure inside, so I made marks around the mold to ensure that the top and bottom stay perfectly together. The following day, I opened the mold and removed the mast. As the foam expands, the carbon and epoxy get pressed hard against the walls of the mold, resulting in an outcome similar to bladder molding. I noticed two dry spots right away, but they weren't too bad. Since the mass will later be receiving a hot coat of epoxy, it'll saturate the dry spots. The next step is to reinforce the bottom section of the mast and add inserts. I used the drill to remove the first four inches of foam out of the mast, then used an even thinner drill bit to remove the foam in the leading edge and trailing edge. Then I grinded two M18 nut inserts to make them as narrow as possible. I poured epoxy into the hollow section of the mast, then packed the inside with strands of carbon fiber. Once filled to the level where I wanted the inserts to go, I placed the screws with inserts into the mast. I applied Crisco butter to the screws beforehand to be able to remove them, but it's important not to get the butter on the inserts since they need to stick to the epoxy. Once in place, I added more carbon strands and epoxy until it was entirely filled. I let the epoxy cure, then removed the screws and sanded everything smooth. I also filled in 
the other end of the mast with carbon strands and epoxy so that both ends are extra solid. Next, I made the top plate that connects the mast to the board. For this, I cut out a plank of wood to the outline of the desired plate and put wax paper inside to create a sort of mold. Then, I filled that mold with many layers of carbon tape and fiberglass, changing the direction of the carbon strands for each layer, making sure everything was well saturated with epoxy. I kept adding layers until it was about 6 mm thick. Then, I placed the mold cover on top and weighed it down with 4 cinder blocks. The weight squished all the layers together while the epoxy cured, resulting in a very rigid plate. I carefully traced out the positions of the holes that will secure the plate to the board. Starting with a small bit, I drilled each hole and gradually worked my way up to an 8mm diameter drill bit that would accommodate the M8 screws. To ensure that the mass was properly aligned on the plate, I measured and drew a center line on the plate and then positioned the mast so that the leading and trailing edge of the mast foil sat directly on top of the line. Once everything was in place, I mixed epoxy with a high density filler and used it to create a joint all the way around the base. Using a bubble level, I made sure that the plate was perfectly level and the mast was perfectly vertical. After the epoxy had cured, I sanded the joint smooth and prepared the area for the next step of the process, the carbon layup. I added three layers of carbon to each side of the mast and filled in the remaining spaces with epoxy to thicken the plate. Although I forgot to record this final step, they were fairly straightforward. I sanded everything smooth, ensuring all the surfaces were even and free of imperfections, and gave the mast a final coat of epoxy to protect it and enhance its appearance. That's it, my mast is done. I hope this video gave you ideas on how to build your own hydrofoil mast. Next time I'll be doing a hydrofoil video, how to make the actual foil. Thanks for watching and see you next time.